and I may inconvenience them a little. But you know what's going to be super inconvenient? Me being dead. That's going to be very inconvenient. And so I am going to take it that seriously every single time. I'm going to take it that seriously because these, you know, little th feelings that we think are, are little, feeling neglected, feeling unseen, feeling unheard, feeling lonely, feeling um, helpless, you know, feeling stressed, feeling angry, feeling guilty, feeling shameful, feeling hopeless. These are feelings that gone unaddressed will escalate and lead to and can lead to death. Hi, my name is Halima and I welcome you to the podcast Healing with Halima Nia Lessons in Womanhood, where I invite you to embark on a transformative journey of embracing your feminine power. As a fashion designer and style coach, together we'll explore how embracing feminine power can lead us to heal from the challenges that sometimes dim our inner and outer beauty. I'm so excited to be here for the second episode of the podcast. I want to sincerely thank everyone who tuned into the first episode. I am just so excited to build this uh, amazing community where we can learn and grow and strengthen ourselves together as women. Today, we're going to be talking about the subject of good girl syndrome. And I just want to say that in order for us to be these absolutely beautiful women that we aspire to be, we have to be willing to be the bad girl. We have to be willing to be the bad girl. And this is something that we don't often talk about because so many of us are obsessed with being nice. We're obsessed with being nice. We're willing to be nice at all costs. We're willing to sacrifice everything to be nice at the detriment of ourselves. And I really just want to give you a definition of nice. Nice means, by definition, means to be pleasant, agreeable, satisfactory. And I really want us to think about this for a minute. Nice is not kind. Nice is not sweet. Nice is not to be moral, to be integral, to be authentic. It's not to be generous. It's not to be any of those things, right? It's not bad inherently to be agreeable or to be satisfactory. But these are really key words for us to look at. Agreeable and satisfactory. Agreeable to who? If you're obsessed with being nice, then you at all times are striving to be agreeable to any and everyone. And this is why we're struggling so badly because you can't be agreeable to everyone. You're literally striving to be agreeable to people who don't believe in the same things as you, who don't want the same things out of life, who don't have the same morals as you, who don't have the same values as you, as you who don't have the same priorities, who don't have the same lifestyle. Like you're striving to be agreeable to people who could never understand your perspective on life, nor should they. You're striving to be agreeable to those people. You're striving to be satisfactory, literally satisfactory. You're striving to meet the expectations of people who don't even have the life you want, who don't have the lifestyle you want, who don't believe in the same way you believe, who don't have your same values, who don't have your same morals. Like you're striving to be satisfactory to them. You're striving to be satisfactory to anybody who exists. You're striving to be satisfactory to anyone who comes in relation to you. Everyone. That is so extremely taxing to be concerned about that at all times. You can't possibly be concerned about meeting everyone's expectations at all times and also live the life of your dreams and really cultivate this amazing, beautiful life. Like you can't like it's way too many things to be focused on at once. Like you can't obsess over other people's perspective and be very like grounded and in tune with your own thoughts and values and beliefs and acting on them. You can't, you can't, it's, it, it, you, it's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. And so this good girl syndrome is the idea that as girls were raised to not be, to not be moral or integral or uh, have our own beliefs and to be good based on those beliefs and values and morals, we're raised to be good based on other people's standards and expectations. So if you, you know, want to do something that honors yourself, you want to say something that honors yourself or do something that honors yourself, you may often be met with, oh no, but you know, 
the family won't like that oh you know that'll make them feel this type of way oh you know just be a good girl just go along just go with it just be good just be good just be good for others not good to yourself be good to others and this training often starts at a very 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 young age and so it can be a very deeply ingrained uh, you know beliefs and social conditioning that leads us to really have these very strong people pleasing behavior we have to get rid of people pleasing people are never pleased people are never pleased so you obsessing over pleasing other people is a losing battle you'll lose every single time because people are never pleased but you know who could be pleased you know who you're actually capable of pleasing yourself and that will give you so much you will go to sleep feeling so good at night knowing that you pleased yourself that you honored the beliefs that you have you've lived your life according to the morals and values that you hold like you will feel so good about yourself when you do that when you live the life of your dreams not the expectations of others willing like a part of like being willing to be the bad girl is that some people you're going to disappoint people like some people are not going to be pleased by what you've chosen to do they wanted you to do this and you don't want to you know you want to do something else instead you have to be willing to say no no is not a bad word no is a beautiful word actually you know but sometimes we have this you know social conditioning that tells us that no is a bad word and yes is a good word well look at it like this every time you say no you're saying yes to something else if i say no i cannot do that for you no i cannot go there no i cannot show up in this way i'm actually saying yes to the fact that during that same time i wanted to have a self-care day I wanted to read and study this book I wanted to take this class I wanted to have quality time with my husband I wanted to have some quality time with my children I wanted to you know cook this you know high quality meal for myself that I know if I do that I'm going to have to you know it's gonna be a real rushed low quality meal and I want to say yes to my health I want to say yes to love I want to say yes to my joy I want to say yes to my education and the things that I'm working on like I you're saying yes to something else you're not just saying no and that's just you're just saying no to them no you're saying yes to something else we only have so many minutes in a day we only have so much time in a day you can only say yes to so many things and so when you're constantly saying yes to other people and violating your own self betraying yourself to do so you know you're telling yourself no so are you you're gonna say no either way that's the thing you're saying yes to everyone but you're really you're still saying no to someone and that's you so would you rather say no to you or would you rather say no to other people who do you have to sleep with at night? Who has to pay the price for these actions that you're making when you're neglecting your self-care? Who is going to be the one to deal with that? Is it going to be them or is it going to be you? Who's going to be in the hospital? Who's going to have their mental health messed up? Who's going to, you know, have their responsibilities, you know, negated and have to deal with the consequences of falling behind on things because you were not putting yourself first? Who's going to have to deal with those? The result of those actions? You. So make sure that you can go to sleep easy at night by honoring yourself your obligations your commitments the things that are truly in alignment with the life that you are striving to cultivate for yourself and to the life that you know is for you is based on your spiritual relationship your relationship with god who you know that he's calling you to be focus on that dream focus on that life and sometimes we're gonna have to say no to things in order to reach that goal Everyone doesn't have your assignment. Everyone is not on your path. Everyone doesn't know where you're supposed to be going. You do. So you have to follow and trust your path. You know, some of the things that fall under good girl syndrome is a fear of rejection. We're so scared to be disliked or rejected. And it's understandable to a degree. You know, we as human beings, we are a com we are communal by nature. You know, we are. Um, and so we do need people. But when you are constantly so fearful of rejection that you don't even allow yourself to be who you truly are and operate in your truth because you're constantly striving to curate yourself to be this perfect person for other people because you don't want to be rejected, you actually cause yourself to not be able to access the people who are really 
a perfect match for you because you're not truly standing in your truth to open yourself up to attracting those people because you're not even being yourself. Being fearful of being rejected by people is literally keeping you from being embraced by the people that's for you. So stop being scared. The people trust that the people that are for you are for you and that you won't be rejected by them. There is billions of people on this planet. Your people are out there and you will not have to sacrifice and compromise yourself and your beliefs and your self-care um, and self-regard in order to have them, to be loved by them. And you know, being willing to be more assertive. Being assertive is a word that a lot of women and girls have a hard time with. And you know, I wanna offer you this. If you struggle with being assertive, something that I was taught that is really, really helpful is to just have your statement and just repeat yourself. Don't over explain yourself over and over and over again. Don't get flustered in arguments and back and forth with other people. Know your truth, stand in your truth, and when challenged, just repeat yourself. I'll give you an example. Um, I know someone who she was, um, you know, having some physical symptoms and she was like really concerned about them. And she was just like, oh my God, I don't know if I'm overreacting or if I am, but I really want to go to, uh, I really want to go to the hospital. This feels serious to me. I really want to go to the hospital. So she was talking with her dad and um, she got really annoyed because her dad was just like, you're overdoing it. Like, you don't need to go to the hospital. Like, it's not that serious. Like, you'll be okay. Like, you're doing the most, you know? And she was really, really upset by him reacting like that. And, you know, she felt judged for her making the decision to go to the hospital. And so, you know, she went to the hospital and she was talking with me after going because she was just like, huh, I'm just dreading, you know, seeing my dad because I know he's going to like, you know, have so much to say about the fact that I went to the hospital and it ended up not being that serious. Like he's he's gonna have so much to say and I'm just so like annoyed and she was just so flustered and overwhelmed and irritated. And I was telling her, you know, you have your story. You have your truth. Your truth is I was having this symptom. I didn't like how I felt. I wanted to go to the hospital hospital to get confirmation on what was going on and to get some support. I got confirmation on what was going on and I'm happy that I went. She said, yes, that's the truth. Okay. Let him know that. And when he challenges you, just say the same thing again. Hey, I had symptoms. I didn't feel good. I wanted to go to the hospital to get confirmation on what was going on and to get some support. I got it. And I feel good. I'm happy that I went. And he says, oh, but, you know, they, you didn't even need to go. You just wasted money. Like, you did, you know, it ended up not being that serious. Hey, I was having symptoms. I didn't feel good. I wanted to go to the hospital to get confirmation on what was going on and to get some support. I got it. I'm glad that I went. And I feel good. Okay, well, you know, I'm glad that you feel good. But, you know, you still, you know, I mean, you could have figured that out by just going on Google. Hey. I was having some symptoms. Um, I didn't feel good. I wanted to go to the hospital to get confirmation um, and to get some support. Um, I got that. I'm happy I went and I feel good now. Just keep repeating yourself. If they keep having things that they have to say, I don't have anything more to tell you than my truth. That's my truth. That is my truth. That's my experience. Is uh, I don't. I don't know what else, you know, to tell you. If it is what it is. That's my truth. That's what I did. And so I just think that, and she, she, she found that that was really, really, really helpful for her. Because she was finding that she was just looking, the, the suffering she was experiencing was that she was just really looking for his validation. She really wanted him to understand her and, you know, why she was panicking and why she wanted to go to the hospital and how she, and understand how she did enjoy the fact that she went. And even if it was simple, she's happy that, she, you know, they told her that, like, he wanted her to be in her world and validate that her world made sense and that it was okay she he wanted she wanted his approval and so that was the you know the cause of her suffering and so you know when she realized like you know i don't need his approval like i can just get more grounded in what my reality was what my truth was was that i had my reasons for going 
I chose to go. It, I got what I was looking for. And I'm, and I'm happy that I went. Like, that is, that's all that matters. His perspective is his perspective. And you can listen to it, you know. And she, you know, you, she was respectful, you know. And that's the thing. Sometimes it's like because we're looking for validation and approval for people so much, it takes us, like, out of our beautiful space. Because we're now getting, like, really ugly and nasty. Because now we're, like, really heavily trying to defend ourselves and, you know, really losing control. And people see that. And so, you know, you don't want to lose, you don't want to be disrespectful to anyone. You don't want to do that. And so she was able to stay in a respectful space. She could listen to, you know, she could listen to what he had to say, you know, you know, she could hear him out and what he had to say about, you know, his experience with going to doctors and, you know, when to know when it's serious enough to go and when it's not. And, you know, she can, and you can listen, when you approve of yourself, you can listen to other people's perspectives and not feel threatened, not feel insecure. You could just like, she, you, she can just literally just listen to him and hear him out and really probably gain something of value, you know, because she doesn't feel threatened and insecure. She can just listen um, to what he has to say. And when she does feel um, maybe like she's being challenged or even attacked or since she can in a very classy and elegant way just assertively express herself i understand what you're saying i understand your perspective i had symptoms i did not feel good um and i wanted to i wanted to go to the hospital to get confirmation and support on what was going on i went and i got that and i'm happy that i went i feel better now you're saying your perspective he can say his perspective but you're not desperate for his approval you're you're just like so understanding of why you did what you did and confident in what you did and your experience and you're like it is what it is you know maybe next time i won't handle it the same way maybe next time i won't this is how i handle it this way and i'm comfortable with that i'm okay with that i'm willing to pay the consequences for that that is my truth I don't need you to understand it. I don't need you to validate it. I don't need you to approve of it. I'm just letting you know this is what it was. I'm okay with it. And so it keeps us in this very beautiful place. And people can really respect you for that. They can respect you for having your own perspective. Because they know that they have their own perspective. And so that's the thing about being willing to be the bad girl. People may not agree. You may not meet their expectations. But you will often gain their respect. You know, this good girl syndrome, it often keeps us from asking for help when we need it. Right. Because we don't want to be the bad girl. We don't want to be the we don't want to be a lot of what we associate with being this good girl is not taking up space, not being a burden, not being, um, you know, just essentially like just being like invisible and just being um ready and willing and able to meet everyone else's needs but not to have needs of our own um and that's actually insane so a part of being willing to not be nice not being obsessed with being nice being willing to be the bad girl is being willing to ask for help be willing to be inconvenient because the thing about it is that you have needs too and something that I strive to remind myself when I when I uh, may feel a little insecure about asking for help or, you know, things that I may need, I strive to remind myself that every feeling, every experience has stages to it. And so when you talk about something as drastic and devastating as, you know, dying, right? When you're gone. People will have so many uh, feelings about that, right? People is, you know, depending on how, you know, you go, like people will have so many thoughts about like, oh my God, like if I had known that she was struggling in this way, I would have showed up. If I had known, you know, I would have cooked, you know, if I was, if I knew she was struggling with eating, you know, I would have made her a meal. Like if I knew that, you know, she was really stressed, like I would have taken something off her plate. Like if I knew that she was, you know, lonely and, you know, feeling depressed like that, you know, I would have, you know, hung out with her. Like I would have strived to, um, you know, do something to brighten her day like you know i would have you know done this or i would have done that or i would have been here i would have been there i would have 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 once you're gone 
people will have a lot of feelings about that. And so because I know that they would care if I was to die in a tragic way, I'm going to utilize that care now. So if I am really going through it, I'm really struggling with something and, you know, I'm really feeling super emotional or need clarity about this or, you know, need some support, I'm going to be willing to ask for the help I need. I'm going to call that random person that I haven't talked to in a long time because I know, like, you may feel like, oh, it's not that serious. Like, I'm just feeling depressed now. Depression gone unaddressed can lead to suicide. Do you think they would want you to kill yourself? No. So be willing to call them late at night to get help with what's going on. Like you you really are that valuable. You really are that important. Like people really do care. They want, they, they appreciate your life and they're willing to show up for you, but you have to be willing to show up for yourself when it's not at that extreme level. If they would care when I'm gone, I'm going to take advantage of them caring right now because I need their care. I need their concern. I need it right now. And I may inconvenience them a little. But you know what's going to be super inconvenient? Me being dead. That's going to be very inconvenient. And so I am going to take it that seriously every single time. I'm going to take it that seriously. Because these, you know, little feelings that we think are, are little. Feeling neglected. Feeling unseen. Feeling unheard. Feeling lonely. Feeling, um helpless you know feeling stressed feeling angry feeling guilty feeling shameful feeling hopeless these are feelings that gone unaddressed will escalate and lead to and can lead to death right they can lead to the taking of your own life or they can lead to even just um illness in the body that will ultimately lead to death so it is that serious so yes as a woman I believe it's very important for us to be willing to take up space be willing to inconvenience people because if you weren't here that would be extremely inconvenient trust that and I'm sure it's easy for you to realize that like I'm sure you can think and be like dang if I was not here if I was dead like a lot of people would be messed up a lot of people would really like hate that like a lot of people really enjoy the fact that I'm alive so they enjoy the fact that I'm alive then I'm going to need you to help me I need you to give me a ride I'm sorry, I'm stressed and I need a ride. I'm going to need you to um, talk to me because I'm really confused about this and I'm feeling a lot of guilt and shame. I'm going to need you to, um, you know, I'm, you know, really hungry. I'm going to need, can you get me some food? You know, um, can you spend some time with me? I'm feeling really lonely. Like, can you, like I'm going to ask for those things. I need some advice. Like, I'm going to ask for those things. I'm not going to overthink it. I'm not going to overthink it. I'm not a burden because you know what will really be burdensome is me not being alive. So I'm so as much as you're going to care, then I'm going to take advantage of you caring now because I need you now. I need you now. So I'm going to take a, I'm going to be willing to take up that space. OK, and and when you're willing to take up space, it's not you don't have an attachment to this certain person showing up in this certain way. Like I'm committed to taking care of myself. So if I know that I need someone, it may not be you. I got many other people that I can reach out. I'm going to just keep reaching out and keep reaching out until, you know, what I need is addressed. You know, God works through people. There's nothing wrong with you needing something from others. Ask for the ride. Ask for the, ask for the help. Ask for the assistance on this project that you're working on. You love this project. You want this project to be successful. Ask for help. You're struggling. You don't know how to do this. You're struggling in your relationship. You're struggling in your friendship. Like, ask for help. Oh, I don't know how to do this. I'm really confused. I'm really feeling hurt. I'm really feeling bothered. I'm really feeling stressed. Ask for help. Ask. The worst thing that people can tell you is no. Coming back to this. We cannot be fearful of being no, of, of being told no. No is not the worst thing in the world. They just are not capable of doing it. At, someone else will tell you yes. You know how many people exist in this world? You have to be unapologetic in the pursuit of what of taking care of yourself. You have to be unapologetic in the pursuit of taking care of yourself. I was recently going through something and I was just like in the space of just like, oh my God, like I'm just so sad. I am so sad right now. And I just really, I have this question in my mind and I just really, you know, don't, no, you know, I just really 
I, I, I need some help. You know, I need some help with this. I, I, you know, I just thought about it. I was like, you know, this person isn't available. This person isn't available. This person isn't available. I just kept thinking. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to ask this person. I haven't talked to them in a while, but I know that they care about me. I know that if I was dead, they would be sad. So I'm going to ask them. Is that serious? It's literally that serious. Like, you have to literally think about it like that. Like, stop feeling like a burden. You're not a burden. And you're not a burden. You're not a burden from help for the people that you can trust and get what you need it's a big bright beautiful world out here and you are entitled to some of that love as much love as you're willing to give to others know that you're deserving of that same love but you have to be willing to open yourself up to receive it you have to know that you deserve it something I've learned is that everybody has so many things going on that you know they have to prioritize things and so when you don't make your issues a big deal it's not that they don't care it's just that they don't they won't prioritize it prioritize you know being willing to support you because they think you're okay because you're not owning your pain you're not owning your experience you're not being truthful about your reality so they don't know to prioritize it but they will be willing and that's why when that's why if you were gone, they would be saying, oh, I would have moved this around for her. I would have stopped doing this. I would have, I could have reorganized my schedule. I could have done this. I could have done that. If I knew it was going to lead to her dying, I want her here. I would have, I would have done a lot to prevent that. But they just have to know how to prioritize things appropriately. So you have to be real and truthful and honest about how you're doing and what you have going on. You have to be willing to take up space. You have to be willing to be the bad guy that has a problem. That is inconveniencing. That is, that is a bit inconvenient. You have to be willing to not be so nice and perfect all the time. You have to be willing to be a real person. Not a good girl. Good girl. I, I think all of this is the ultimate good girl. I think it's good to honor yourself and to be authentic and to um, live in your truth. And you know be willing to set the boundaries and make the decisions that lead to you living the life of your dreams. I think that's the ultimate good girl. But that's based on my morals, my values, my beliefs. But what's good to me may not be good to somebody else. So I want to be good. I want to be a good girl for me. And I'm willing to be a bad girl to you. So that's all I got for today. Stop being obsessed with being nice. Be willing to be the bad girl. Be willing to be talked bad about. Be willing to not be understood. Be willing. Affirm yourself. Validate yourself. I'm willing to be perceived as selfish, as bad, as not caring, as uh, inconsiderate, as like, what are all the bad, all the bad words? Be willing to be those things. Be willing. Be willing. Please yourself. Don't be obsessed with pleasing other people. Be willing to not be perfect. That's something that I strive that is like really, really liberating. Like you will be so beautiful as a woman when you really accept that you're not perfect and are okay with that because you will have peace within. When you stop striving for perfection, you will have true peace within. I have been like striving to like just really operate in that so much. Like if I mess up a meal, a meal doesn't go well. Um, I used to feel like really like, oh my God, like I would just be like so um, extremely like overwhelmed and flustered and stressed. And like my husband would literally be like, oh my God, like you're like, like this is too much. Like you're like this reaction is like way too much. Like it would be like, obviously it's not beautiful, right? We're striving to be beautiful. That's not beautiful. But you know what is beautiful is when I started being like, hey, you know, um the meal didn't go as i planned you know as i'm sure you know um i'm not perfect so <laughs> every single meal that i make for the rest of my life will not be excellent and 100 percent. i'm like i'm sure you know that right yeah so this is one of those meals um i'm so sorry <laughs> not like saying that you know we're talking about not over apologizing but like yeah i you know i really am I'm, I'm really, uh, I am sorry that uh, 
I think it's, you know, unfortunate. I'm sorry that, you know, our meal didn't go as planned. I'm sorry that you're disappointed, you know, in the meal. But yeah, this was just one of those nights, you know. But I had this meal to offer. I strived my best and it's something's wrong with it. It's off. It's not the best. I'm not perfect. It's one of those days. Um, I learned this from that experience or that and I'm going to strive to apply that moving forward, you know. Hopefully it won't. You know, hopefully I'll learn from this and not do it and, and it won't work in the same way. Or maybe it will, you know. I cannot guarantee I cannot guarantee your perfection. Um, and I'm at peace with that. Um, it's up to everyone else to decide if they're at peace with that. Ah! <laughs> but I'm not perfect. So, yes, please, you know, just understand that everything is not going to be done perfectly all the time for the rest of my life. I've come to terms with that and everyone else has to come to terms with that as well like we really have to get to that point of understanding like i'm not perfect the meal is not going to be perfect i'm not going to react to everything perfectly at all times i'm not going to what everything i work on is not going to turn out 100 percent perfect like i'm not perfect so when those times come i can still stay at peace because i understand that this is a part of life i am going to extract what i can learn from it um, i'm going to have sincere you know um you know, I can sincerely apologize and, you know, ask for people's forgiveness if I, you know, hurt. It's impacted them negatively in some way. Genuinely, I can genuinely apologize. But I can't beat myself up to oblivion because this is literally a part of life. It's just life. Like, so that's the thing about being a beautiful woman is you have to understand and be comfortable with yourself. And a part of being yourself is understanding that you're not perfect. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to be your authentic self. God created us so beautifully. And when you truly embrace yourself, you truly embrace your beauty. So that's all I have for you. So I do want to announce that I have launched my Patreon. And so uh, you can, in the link in my bio or on my social media, you can see, uh, you can find my Patreon link. And um, you subscribing to my Patreon and becoming a member allows me, you know, to continue to do this work. It really supports me and, you know, having the freedom to continue to do this work in the way that I strive, that I'm so passionate about doing. So if you love this podcast, if you really want it to continue, um, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. Um, when you are an exclusive member on that Patreon, I will be posting one um, podcast episode a month just for the members on there so if you want to be able to see that podcast episode um you subscribing to the patreon would be excellent and um you also if you have any question you ever want to ask me um members on that patreon um i'm open to act, to answering you know any question that i can so yeah i would love 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 love, love your support um and what i'm you know striving to do you know with this podcast i really really appreciate it um i have so many exciting things planned and yes well that's all i have for you today i hope you enjoyed and god willing i'll talk to you later bye